BMG that I just shot about 70 rounds out of the other day. Absolutely amazing. We're going to be talking to the Barrett about how it's only been used in one crime since it was invented in the last 30 years against an armored truck. Uh, and how the establishment wants to ban things like Bushmasters and the 223, well, they're also trying to ban you, uh, Mrs. Barrett, who I do want to say are a very, very lovely lady. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, uh, people got very excited yesterday when I said on the radio that Immortal Technique, one of, or if not the most uh, successful independent rappers or hip hop stars in the world, millions and millions of downloads, hundreds of thousands of uh, CDs back when they still had that, was coming to town. But they couldn't make it yesterday, but they're here today in Austin, Texas, to talk about uh, The Martyr, uh, his new CD, uh, very powerful music, and a new film he's got coming out with some pretty big heavy hitters. And so, um, coming up in about 15 minutes, we'll go to break. We'll uh, play the trailer to the new uh, DVD, and then we will come back with our guest. Uh, but he goes by Tech Immortal Technique is here in studio with us uh, with the beautiful Barrett 50 Cal and Immortal. Are you getting a little bit excited right here? You got to admit that is a beautiful piece of work right there, isn't it? Somebody spent a lot of time creating this thing. Someone used their imagination very, very well, and I'm pretty sure they were overcompensating for something as well. Well, yeah, over <laughs> overcompensating. You need an anti-tank weapon that's handheld. Yeah. Um, I think you know. First of all, I appreciate the uh, the introduction. Um, the DVD is actually in stores right now, uh, ViperRecords.com. Um, and I also want to say that you know it's interesting to be on this program because. A lot of people will approach me and they'll be like, I can't believe you're going to do this show. And I think that there are a lot of perceptions about yourself that, um, that people have the wrong idea about. And I'm, I'm more than willing to sit here and have a tempered, relaxed, calm discussion about some of these things. Because I think that, you know, you're not one of these guys who came out and said... The, the whole fascism started with the black guy crowd. You know what I mean? I remember you from the Bush administration days being out there saying, do you realize what's happening here in America? You know, you are looking at it through a right-left paradigm is what you were saying to people. When in reality, it doesn't matter who's going to be there. Whoever comes after Bush is going to have to cross the T's and dot the I's. Well, no, that's, that's it. Exactly it, it, it uh, Cynthia right McKinney was on my show about a month ago. She's back on next week, the former congresswoman. You know, for those that I'm sure most viewers know who she is. And she said, look, it's not that Barack Obama's the lesser of two evils. He's the more effective. Mm. It, uh, Mitt Romney would have done the exact same thing, but couldn't have gotten away with as much. Mm. And I think that, look, if someone else had been able to be in that position, smiling, and then sending all of these troops and mercenaries back into Iraq, back into Afghanistan, exploiting the natural resources, deporting as many people as he did, which we'll get into later. Um, I think that that would have garnered a lot more hatred if it had happened from a right-wing Republican white guy, as opposed to someone who has the impression of being an incredibly liberal individual and yet follows, you know, a secretive agenda that really doesn't answer to anybody, especially not well, sure. the Sure, we're going to get into globalism and a few of the things we talked about before you came into the studio here. All I can say is I'm a true independent. I tweeted earlier today and said, you know, two real independents. You're a real independent. You're not controlled. I mean, I think I first met you seven, eight years ago in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had a chance to be at a few of your events and you've been there at a showing of Endgame. And I just respect the fact that I agree with about 85% of what you stand for. And I probably agree with the other 15 if I fully understood it or had time to follow it all. But most of what I've heard you talk about, I agree with. But you're through a different prism, a different perspective, a different scanner darkly, myself as well. My only issue is this, whatever the globalists are really pushing, it may have a bunch of good reasons and a cover story associated with it of why it sounds good. But I look at what their internal documents, leaked documents, what the larger end game is. Absolutely. And so I'm like, we can't have open borders because the globalists want a North American Union. They want to implode Mexico under Agenda 21, force everybody off their land into maquiladoras, then up here to drive down wages, then to create a culture clash. See, if the system was trying to unify things for everybody to be friends, it'd be different. In the name of, quote, liberalism, mm. they then sell it as a, but I mean, it would take an hour to break the right. whole thing down. No, no, but we'll get into that. I think the, the, the reason reality is that people often uh, misunderstand and misrepresent the mythology of America. For example, the creation of the United States in the fact that when Britain uh, 
surrendered, it ceded a series of territories that didn't belong to them. When Mexico surrendered to the United States after the Mexican-American War, it ceded a series of territories that did not belong to them. You know, all of these Native American tribes, they weren't ruled solely by Spain. As a matter of fact, Spain couldn't exercise control over them. The Mexican government couldn't exercise control. No, I agree. Right? So, how about those people? But and see, the UN will try to represent them and then take over. Right, but this see, is... See, the, but, the, but, the, but I mean, what do you do? Because now it's the UN taking right. over America. And, and then the other part of it becomes from when I hear people talk about who deserves to be here and who doesn't. Because I've met people who don't have papers legally, right? And yet they serve their country in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, mind you, that's not a war that I necessarily believe in, but when I hear a bunch but of- But it's hypocrisy. When I, hear about, when I hear a bunch of chicken hawks saying, oh, you're not down with America, and I look at them and I say, hey, what did you ever do to be considered American besides fall out of some wretched hole in Kansas or, or New York or Texas? You know, here's a guy who barely speaks the language, and yet he's putting his life on the line for the perceived safety of the United States. Now, regardless of whether you or I agree with the premise of the war, he's the paid idea dues behind it, right? He's paid his dues. No, I get that. The people, if you if you're drinking orange juice out there, <laughs> if you're wearing uh, uh, clothes that are made out of cotton as opposed to hemp, because they had to outlaw that, um, if you're eating strawberries in the winter, blueberries in the winter, that doesn't grow in the winter. It had to come from plantation-like atmospheres. You know, we've overthrown governments overseas just to keep I agree globalism neocolonialism right. and and it's tied into neoliberalism as well the idea that everything's for sale that the air's for sale that the water's for sale you know these people want to privatize every aspect of human life and i think that you know sometimes the difference is people can't hear me because i say it through hip hop and no matter what the venue is they'll still think hip hop irresponsible, arrogant young people, or they'll hear you say something and they'll say, oh man, I love this guy, but he went crazy on peers and I, I, I don't think that he you know, should represent the movement that way. At, at some point, you and I will only touch a fraction of the people that we need to speak to, and yet I think that what's important about it is to have so many diverse groups of individuals who have the same core message. What's behind the mask? You know what I mean? Don't show me what you have in the right hand when you play the old switch and grab. You know what I mean? This has a trajectory. At some point, we're going to get... And that's what I'm saying. Whatever they're pushing, whatever the establishment wants, you can bet it's not good for the general public. I don't care what color you are. I mean, I mean, I mean here's an example. I like the immigrants that I know from Mexico, and they tend to be better family people, not decadent. Spoiled brat Americans. I don't care what color the spoiled brat American is. We've had it good so long. They're spoiled brats, and, and that's an over stereotype. But it, but there's some reality to it. Where there's smoke, there's fire. But then the Mexican government, if I go down there, will shake me down, beat me up, steal my car. I can't move down there and go have a baby paid for at the hospital. I can't get all this stuff free. And then I'm criticized up here by Mexico for how bad I am when Mexico has their most draconian anti-immigrant laws in all of Latin America. I see, see, I'm, I'm just sick of of always hearing inherently right. that America's bad. What's bad is this imperial, global, corporate, British model that corporations have adopted that is now open source for these elites. Right. I think, though, that what, what needs to happen in that conversation, because, you know, I love to read the criticisms of myself, not only because I find them funny and they're not true, but also because it gives me a chance to debunk these me things. Me too, it's entertaining. When people say to me, oh, Alex Jones, you mean the guy who talks like the Mike Micro machine man and puts all these dates and stuff into it. I say, listen, <laughs> if you slow down what he's saying and you look literally one sentence by one sentence, you have 200 things to research within the span of that. And I think that sometimes what would benefit you is to slow it down and say, hey man, you know what? Today we're just going to deal with this. No, one I agree, but here's the problem. The way my brain works, I think most people's actually work this way, is that is that I love when people start like that. The problem is the way my brain works. Well, well the, the, there's like a hundred different mm -hmm. things.
fact, what people think I'm talking fast, that's like one one hundredth. Right. Because when I see something, I know all the connections and how it integrates because I've read all the establishment publications and then I know the three or see they're thinking like in three level chess the general public's playing checkers right. and they want to keep us in a checkers level and that's what's so frustrating is that I can see their end game but listen we talked for about five minutes you know right when you got here mm -hmm. about some of the things we want to talk about and we're kind of hitting the end of it sure at the start but it's going awesome in the limited time we've got with you because I know you've got a show to do let's start with I said what do you want to cover first and you said guns so I said hey grab the 50 cal out of the safe uh, so that's why the 50 cal is here on the table because on your shirt is the AK-47 a mortal technique uh, since 1492 I get it we the indigenous peoples are seizing you know our right to self-determination well, and to be armed let's just touch on that uh, I always tell people when they come to me, they say, oh, you know, revolution, you have a lot of, uh, of revolutionary figures from Latin America that are from the left wing. I explain to people, our revolution doesn't come with socialism or communism. That's an adverse effect of America's pressure. Originally, we heard the great prognosticator of democracy come down to Latin America at a time when we had a series of horrible imperialist military dictatorships that governments now are trying to resemble, you know, where you know, if you were convicted of raping a woman as a military officer, you could get out of it by agreeing to marry her. The most insane type of laws you could possibly imagine that governed a government. Um, but when we look at that, when people were saying you can have a democracy and you can vote for your own leaders, we thought that's wonderful, what a great idea. And then the great uh, 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 proselytizer of democracy we realized was the same one backing up Stroessner, Batista, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the imperialist governments that existed in Latin America and the country and the people of Latin America said, what else do you have on the table? Who else has something besides and the this? Soviets came. And the Soviets and the Chinese came. And I, I explained to people, yes, that's a natural part of, of our society, but what we have to explain to individuals is we didn't need a European man to come from the 19th century and explain to us dark people in Latin America the complex concept. Of Plus, sharing. anybody from sharing, Europe has, right? or the U.S., well, no matter what color they are, if, they're, if they've got globalist backing, they're coming with the corporate jackals. They're coming with the economic mm -hmm. hitmen. And so that's the issue. But then you find out that the mega banks, and this isn't a conspiracy, this is on record, funded the communist movement knowing Europe was revolting against the robber barons and the royalty. So they created a new fake grassroots movement that they could control. So it's the same thing with the Soviets going in there. Absolutely. It's like running from Bush to Obama and then running from Obama to uh, uh, Mitt Romney. They're all part of the same thing. So what do you say for America and Latin America and the world? What is, uh, what is at your core, moral technique, tech, what is at the core of your belief, studying this so long, being an articulate, smart guy who's been around the world, f from your historical research, then what system do you like? Because, look, you've got Peter Thiel the big Bilderberg guy trying to take over the libertarian movement right now mm. and turning it into a fake privatization tyranny. How do you beat something that metastasizes and like the thing turns into whatever you run to? Like, like, like you run to one system and it's real at first, but when you turn around, the thing grabs it, absorbs it, and then you, know, you turn around and you, it looks like what you thought it was, but it isn't. Someone once told me that Christianity, Islam, Judaism, all of these religions expanded specifically because they fell into the hands of lesser men. If they had been run by the original people who conceptualized the ideology and who for some reason had it close to their heart and veins. You know, do you think Jesus Christ would look at the way that people have commercialized his religion? Do you think Yeshua ben Yosef would be able to, to look at it without shedding a tear and saying, you've missed the basic premise of everything that I'm trying to tell you, which is treat other people the way you want to be treated. You know, if I came back, I would be a Mexican born in a manger. You know what I mean? In a, in, a, in a hoopty, you know, on occupied territory that was stolen during a war that people started purposefully because they knew they could goad an idiot like Santa Ana into attacking and then reach around with different forces, pull the, crew, pull the uh, entire Navy up to Veracruz and then Los Angeles. What would he say about that? He would be born 
into a society that he had no technical human rights in, similar to the way the Hebrews were treated sure. in Rome. Now, when you discuss all of these issues that are going on in the world, I think what people don't do is they don't connect the actual history to it. And I think that's where I, I try to uh, implement that to them, when I, when, or implement those ideas. When I say, hey, listen, if you look at the history of Russia and the quote unquote USSR bringing freedom, did they bring freedom to Eastern Europe? No, the, they brought the, the, mass murder and death. You have to understand, they did the same thing to Eastern Europe that America did to Central America and to the Caribbean. They colonized right. it. Colonized it, took it over, and said, you know what, we're going to make you dependent on us, to the point that they can still shut off the gas in the Ukraine five years ago. Oh, 